Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So for any of you guys that missed my previous video, Super Mario Odyssey is indeed now fully playable on Yuzu, this Nintendo Switch emulator. In this video, however, we are going to be taking a slightly different look at this game, this time from a performance perspective. So, at the minute, there are many games in the emulation community. One that springs to mind off the top of my head would be God of War 3 on RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator, that technically, yes, is playable, but its performance is just so bad that the game could almost be considered not playable simply due to this factor. So, as I've already said, we're going to be taking a look at the performance of Super Mario Odyssey running on my own system. For anybody who is not aware, I am currently running an i7-8700K, which for this video, I clocked down to 4.5 GHz. Now, the reason I have done this is the fact that at least at this point in time, Yuzu Emulator is only able to utilize one single core out of your own CPU. This basically means that on this 6-core, 12-thread CPU, I am only going to be able to utilize one single core that is running at 4.5 GHz. The reason I downclocked to 4.5 GHz is mainly due to the fact that, well, pretty much nobody out there, or at least 90% of people, are not going to be able to afford 8700Ks, 9700Ks, 9900Ks, and any of these CPUs that are capable of clocking easily up to 5 GHz. However, there are a lot of CPUs from the last 5 or 6 years that are easily able to attain 4.5 GHz, so I wanted to lower my core clock to this amount so it would somewhat level the playing field. The rest of my specs include 16GB of DDR4 3000MHz RAM and I am also using a GTX 980 Ti. In the coming days, I'm also going to be doing some performance tests, not only with Super Mario Odyssey, but many other games on this Switch emulator on my other secondary PC, which contains an i7-3770K. It contains 16GB of DDR3 1600MHz RAM, and also contains a GTX 680. I am mostly going to be testing this because I want to see just how well Yuzu Emulator can and will run both now and at some point in the future on lower tiered or mid tiered PCs. So back to this video now for a minute, I basically just ran around in Metro Kingdom or New Dong City, whichever one you know it by. Basically all that I've done is I've gone into some sub areas, I've checked out the performance in the main hub world, and we are just generally going to be taking a look at what performance is like in its raw and unedited form on this emulator at this point in time. So you are definitely going to see some graphical bugs like you can see on the window reflections right now. You're going to see some performance issues and you're going to see some fairly extreme shader stutter, mostly due to the fact that at least at this point in time, Yuzu emulator does not have a saved disk based cache, meaning that you are going to have to compile your shaders into your driver every single time you reload your game. Now, if you are on Linux, I know that there is a workaround to use a disk-based cache and threaded optimization for NVIDIA GPUs, but at least at this point in time, on Windows anyway, there is no way to do this. As I said in my previous video, they are working on this disk-based cache and hopefully, once it is ready, we will have it for testing and then after that, it will be added to Canary and then nightly versions of Yuzu. So performance wise, what you're seeing right now is going to be fairly typical of what you're going to see throughout this gameplay. You're going to see that performance inside of sub areas in a very similar to fashion to what we saw in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on Simu Emulator is going to be very, very good. I am almost perfectly locked to 59 or 60 frames per second in pretty much 90% of these sub areas. However, in the main hub world areas of most of these kingdoms, you are going to see some fairly significant performance drops. It's a fairly similar circumstance, to be honest, to what you see in pretty much any emulated game where there's a lot of complex geometry and a lot of AIs and NPCs that you're going to have generally a degraded performance in those areas. So in relation to updates to Yuzu, even since the last video I released, was it three days ago, I think, the one that announced that this game Mario Odyssey is fully playable. We have seen more updates that have given visual boosts to games, that have given performance boosts to games, and that have made more and more games compatible on the emulator. 
In the comment section of this video, if there are any games that you want to see me test, please do leave a comment and as always, if I can include it in my compatibility guide for this emulator, I will include it. So down in the description of this video guys, you will find a link to the Team Yuzu Patreon. If you want to help to support these guys in the absolutely outstanding work they have already done and will continue to do in future, you should definitely consider heading over to their Patreon and pledging to support them. You can literally donate or pledge whatever amount you want, be it $1 or $500, it really doesn't matter, every little bit will help these guys out. So I'm going to leave the rest of this video play out guys so you can monitor and take a look at exactly what performance is like in this very performance intensive area. I really do want to give a massive thank you to all of you awesome people who have been watching and liking and commenting on all my videos in the past few weeks and months. It really does mean a lot to see the BSOD gaming community grow and grow. If you have any questions about any emulators or anything I cover myself on the channel, do not be afraid to join my Discord. You will find a link for that in the description of this video and ask any questions you could possibly have. We are a very friendly and welcoming community, so as I said, don't be afraid to join up and ask anything you could possibly wish to know. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.